All right, here we go. Hello, hello, yeah. and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris. Today on Rock Metal Podcast, we have Therion, which has a new album called Leviathan, which released on January 22nd via Nuclear Blast Records. Right now, I'm being joined by Thomas to share some more information about this release. So, Thomas, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. How is life? You're in Sweden, yeah? I'm in Spain right now, actually. Ooh, Spain. Okay, how is yeah. life in Spain? <clears throat> life in Spain is uh, it doesn't happen so much right now. But it has loosened up a little bit. When this thing started, you know, everything was shut down, basically. You could go out with the trash and you could go to the supermarket. That was it. But and now it's a little better, though. But still, it's very closed. Mm-hmm. How did that impact the production of the record? A lot. Uh, we started to to write the material for the record just before the 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 whole thing, you know, came the whole COVID thing. And um, you know, when it started, we we just you know send the files to each other, song ideas and stuff. You know, how can you make something with this, and can you make a bridge for that, and so on. And we had agreed to record the album in Malta. And, um, well, then the world closed. And uh, we had to record the album in eight different countries in the world. (laughs) That's how it's done. (laughs) I recorded here in Spain. The whole choir that you hear is recorded in Israel. One of the singers in the United States. One in England. One in Germany. The drums are recorded in Sweden. You, You know. Yeah. Crazy, but it worked, <laughs> strangely mm-hmm. enough, thanks to technology. Yeah. Is that something that you guys were already kind of doing, or did this situation really push for the, how, what do I want to, for everything being done so separately? <clears throat> yeah, we, we didn't have any choice, really. Yeah. That, that was the choice we had. Normally, we are in the studio together, you know, but this time it didn't work out. Mm hmm. And then as far as mixing, mastering, did you guys already have somebody in mind for that, to bring everything together so it sounded? Uh, Because it doesn't doesn't sound like you guys did it all separately. No, but that's actually how it's done. The only thing that are made together is the the rhythm guitars, our two guitar players that do it together. That's it. And then we have a, uh, we choose the sound engineer from Sweden uh, who uh, mixed it all, you know, and mastered. And did a tremendous job, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I completely freaking agree. Now, something that I think is a big question. I hope it's a big question. What is this album about? Oh, it's it's um, it's it doesn't have any any theme or red thread, you know, through it. Um, It's just a a normal album, which is great for us because the, the last two albums that we did. One was a rock opera, three CD. And the the album before that was a cover album in French, you know. So me and Christopher just talked to each other and said, let's make a, let's go home again. Let's make a normal Therian album, you know, with separate songs, good songs. Mm -hmm. When you guys were basically. Now, when you guys were, yeah, that's okay. Um, when you mentioned an album full of good songs, how many did you guys have to write to whittle it down to these 11? Well, I, um, I didn't count it, but we wrote a bunch because, like I said before, when, when the lockdown came, it was not much to do than writing songs, you know. We were sitting, sending files, songs forward and back to each other and realized that, hey, we got to... St- take a break now because we have enough for three records <laughs> you know so what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna give out number leviathan number two next year mm-hmm. and also leviathan number three and the songs that are not on this album they are called leftovers but i don't like this word because it sounds it has a negative timber to it it sounds like it's songs not good enough but that's not what it is it's just that they don't fit on the specific specifically this album you know mm-hmm. Okay. So I didn't count, but it's 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 a it's a bunch of songs. <laughs> so at some point, you guys said, "Okay, we have to stop." Like, there's no deadline, right, to produce no. the album, but we just 
we have to stop. But yeah, we, we have enough and we have to start sometime, you know, to, <laughs> to record. So mm-hmm. absolutely. OK, now with the album then being released early 2021, was that because uh, I guess you guys could have released it last year, right? Yeah, but some stuff did made that we uh, were a little bit delayed. You know, people, you know, studio that was wasn't bookable and stuff like that, you know, techno, you know. So uh, we decided let's wait until January then. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said you mentioned it was different studios not being bookable. I bet that was a, a scheduling issue between different countries. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We uh, I, I recorded in a studio in a town called Alicante that that are nearby here, and absolutely fantastic experience. I was working with a with a guy I didn't know before, so it was a total chance, you know. But we clicked directly, and he, he did a stellar job. You know? Yeah, I guess what was it about his job that you enjoyed? Well, he was not only sitting there and doing his job. He 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 got. He got connected with with our music and came up with ideas, even though he doesn't. He's not paid for to do that, but he did it anyway. And it's inspiring to work with a person that are awake and you know, and uh, and happy with with what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a really, really good point. Uh, yeah, is that something that you guys find maybe was going on in the music industry up until recently? People just kind of going through the the motions. Maybe it is, but I, I know a lot of musicians also that, I mean, for myself, I'm blessed and, and fortunate enough to have work. You know, I do work for other bands and, you know, arrangements for uh, for even pop bands, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I I have things to do all the time and I, I get paid. But I know a lot of musicians that got really depressed by this thing also. they They don't have anything to do. So, uh, which is tragic, but let's hope they, they come back to normal, to normality when this is over, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, something you mentioned was you also do arrangements for other genres of music. Is that, yeah. so, is that something that you take into account when working on, when you're working on this album? Absolutely. I mean, we are not afraid to take influences from, from, from other genres at all. I mean. It's not likely you will hear a Therian album with hip hop influences, but you know we we've done an ABBA cover on an earlier album. Mm-hmm. We we absolutely. I think when you when you um, uh, how do you say it when you make a crossover with different styles in music, I think it mostly becomes very interesting. Mm-hmm. Which styles would you say outside of obviously hip hop? No trap beats. Uh, not at all. But not at all. <laughs> no, but for example, when we we were in the tour bus, me and Christopher, uh, the founder of the band, and and we were looking at each other. You know, can you imagine if if the fans heard what we're listening to now and digging it? You know, and <laughs> but you know, big influences for us is Beatles, for example. Mm-hmm. We I'm a huge Beatles fan, and um, a lot of 70s pop from from different corners of the world, mostly the United States and UK and, and Sweden, of course, that we grew up with. Mm-hmm. And I grew up with a father who was an opera singer. So I heard a lot of that stuff. So Okay. Now mm-hmm. Theron's starting to make a little more sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, something you mentioned uh, was ABBA as well, um, which I guess is more disco. I don't know, disco pop, but I guess, how do you come to bring these styles together and then make something that is cohesively Therion? I don't know. That's a good question. Hard to answer. But, um, you know, when you, if you listen to an ABBA album, you know, there are fantastic arrangements and, and genius melodies, you know, and that's what we are trying to accomplish with Therion, but with a heavier sound, of course. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, try to take a t- 
take a listen to one of the earlier al- uh, albums with ABBA and you will find it's fantastic. You know, and it's if it's good, it's good, you know. And I think there are no rules to what you can do with, with metal or hard rock, you know. You can do whatever you want. And when Christopher first did an album with symphonic opera stuff in it, you know, people thought he was nuts. <laughs> You know, you can't do like that. Yes, I can, you know, and I will. And he did. And, and here we are today, 17 years or later or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting thing. Have you found then that uh, there's more growing acceptance to what it is that you guys are doing? Or have you found that it was just kind of always taken as, OK, this works and it's great? Well, now nowadays, as I see it, symphonic hard rock or, or symphonic metal opera metal is kind of sort of being mainstream, at least here in Europe, you know. Mm. Um, a lot of bands, if you have Epica, you have Nightwish, you have Therion, you have this and that, and it became very common. It's like glam in the 80s. You know? <laughs> but I'm proud to say that we were one of the first bands who did this. Yeah. Now, when it came to recording, I'm always curious whenever, I think you mentioned uh, that some stuff was done in Israel. Yeah. Um, I'm always curious, did you guys send arrangements to, uh, to like for symphony and choir and whatnot? Did you guys come up with those yeah. arrangements and then send them off? Yeah, yeah. And the choir needed the, the, the proper notes, you know, to, because they read music. I don't. Well, I can see if the notes goes up and down, but that, that's about it. But <laughs> these guys, are, they are reading it, you know, like we are reading books. Aha, uh-huh, aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. And then they, they wing it. So uh, we had to send the, the, the arrangements down there and the notes and everything, you know. Okay. Did you find that, how, did you, how does that process work? Did you guys have to get used to that for a little while or are you guys on to that? No, we, so, we, we sort of know because we make demos that are pretty much the, the sketch to how we want it to sound. Mm-hmm. So um, we're trying to work with, with people who can make that happen, you know. Um, so when we get it back, hopefully we're knocked out by quality. Yeah. You know, but of course it's, it's when, when you make an album, you don't really know what you're, what you're up to until you get, in, until it's done, you know, <laughs> because during the way you have, you have a plan where you want to go, but during the way, the path stuff happens and you, oh, let's try this and that. And it takes another turn, you know, so, but we accomplished more or less what we wanted with this album. Okay, that was be my follow-up question is, did that happen with this album? And are you surprised by the product that you're now holding? Yeah, I'm, um, in my opinion, this turned out much better than I thought. Much better than I thought. Sound-wise, vocal-wise, everybody did a stellar job. And I'm not even thinking about that we, that we were not together while we were doing it. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it, it was quite a ride, quite an experience, and we are very happy with the result. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now, is there anything in particular that you wanted to chat about, Thomas? Oh, I can chat about whatever you want. I will say that I miss touring a lot. I can't wait until this bug dies and uh, so we can get out on the road again, you know. And especially I want to go to the States again because it was a long time ago. I also have relatives there in Naples. Okay. If you know where that is? No, not in the States anyway. Uh, yeah, you're not in the States? No, I'm in Canada. You're in Canada? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that continent, I want to go to Canada too and eat poutine. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, I did that for the first time. We, we did a, a gig in Brazil just before the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. And when we were getting, getting home, we were having a layover in, in, uh, in Toronto, mm-hmm. nine hours. And we went out to town and let's go try poutine. And I really loved it, you know. <laughs> and also I'm a big hockey fan. So, you know, Canada is, yeah, mm-hmm. means a lot to me. Why, thank you, sir. What surprised you the most about the poutine? That that you that it was so many different kinds that you could choose from, mm-hmm. you know. It was with this and it was with that, and it, you know, I only saw pictures of it. So I want to try that, you know. 
And it's sort of like the, as I understood it, it's sort of like the national dish, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. If yeah. We, yeah. If we had a national dish, I wonder what that would be. That and butter tarts. Have you ever tried butter tarts? No, is it good? It is. It's, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to describe it, especially coming from Europe, because pies are such a big thing here. Um, like sugar pie. So next time you're in Canada, you should try sugar pie or butter tarts. I will definitely do that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Especially if you've been to Montreal. Have you been to Montreal? Yes, we played there. We played uh, with Theory on 2007 in Canada. We, we did Montreal, Toronto, and Quebec. Okay. Those would be the Gothic Kabbalah days, yeah? Yeah, that's true. That was my first tour, actually, with the band. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. What is it you miss most about touring? Everything. Especially now, I haven't been on a stage since one year back, you know. Wow. And I even miss the smell of an airport, you know. I, I, the whole <laughs> thing, hanging out with the guys, going out on stage, after parties, uh, sleeping in a bumping bus. Really, it's, it's sexy. It's, I really miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, then, I mean, obviously this year is kind of up in the air, but do you guys have anything booked yet, just in case some stuff opens no. up? No? No. No, we have not. Okay. But as soon as things are showing a sign to get better, we will start to plan it, you know. Okay. So then the plan for 2021 is to uh, obviously continue the cycle on Leviathan, but you also mentioned that there's another album. Yeah. Okay. There's two more albums that will follow this, as we know now. Yeah. Is it recorded already? Mixed already? N- no, not, not at all. Not at all. But we have the, the demos down, you know. It's, it's all in my computer. Okay. So, but we are still continuing to write. I mean, for, I mean, if I write a song now that beats another one that are in the pipeline, that other one has to go out and we take out the new one, <laughs> take in the new one. <laughs> How do you organize? But the, but the pl- Pardon me. Sorry, so what were you saying? But, but we were asking about touring before. The plan is, or the, the wish is that we can go out this autumn, this fall. Mm-hmm. That, that's what we hope for. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And I was just curious with all these demos and, and arrangements that you're working on with other bands, how do you organize everything up here? Or do you have a system like on paper that you use? Up here, it's okay. But you should see my desktop. It's like a serial. You know, my girlfriend comes in and just shakes her head when she sees that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a mess. I'm pretty messy. But I sort of know where I have my stuff, you know. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, my good man, I believe we are just about up on our time, but we did chat about <clears throat> the album. We chatted about 2020. We chatted about touring. We chatted about 2021, upcoming albums, uh, poutine, butter tarts. What's your favorite Fantastic. dish in Spain? In Spain, they have something called tapas mm-hmm. or tapas. It's small dishes, a little bit of this and that. They have a, something they call tortilla, but it's not like a tortilla in Mexico. This is a kind of a potato omelet. Okay. That are delicious. And then they have, we live in the coast, so it's a lot of, a lot of um, seafood. Mm-hmm. You know, shrimps, lobster. Um, it's it's kind of cheap too, actually. Okay. Yeah. Is a tortilla similar to a frittata? I don't know what is a frittata. <laughs> okay. I, it's, my understanding, it's kind of like an open-faced omelet that's an Italian thing. Oh, no, I, th- this is pretty, pretty thick. It's like, it's like a, it's like a, it looks like a pie almost. Okay. But through it is potato and egg. It's, it's simple. It was from the beginning, the, the poor man's food, you know, but mm-hmm. it's delicious. Yeah. The whole world yeah. is poor man's food, Thomas. Pardon me? The whole world is poor man's food. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. (laughs) (laughs) But good stuff. All right. Fantastic. Well, unless there's anything else that you wanted to chat about, Thomas, then I believe that concludes our interview. So thank you so much for coming on to the Rock and Roll Podcast today, Thomas. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care, sir.